Hello and thanks for joining us for our late night newscast on Adidang TV. I'm Mark Broom. We are going to kick off the bulletin with a look at all the latest from the 2016 Olympics in Rio. Great to have you with us, giving you the latest from the Rio Olympics. I'm Ian Shin. We start with some great news for Team Korea. The nation has won its second gold in women's taekwondo. Following Kim Soe's golden victory, Korea's Uheri defeated Habi Nier of France in the 67 kilo class on Friday. Nier was leading the match in the beginning, but Kim quickly caught up with back-to-back -back kicking attacks, a turning kick followed by a kick to the head, capturing six points in a quick burst of action. But as the final round of taekwondo should be, tension was high right to the end. With quick blocks and relentless rapid kicks, the French rival gave her all. But in the end, it was O who claimed gold, finishing 13 to 12. With her triumph, the 28-year-old became the oldest taekwondo champion at this year's Olympics. And the final round of women's golf has kicked off on Saturday morning local time. And this is the day the world will get to know to whom the golden glory goes. It's been so far so good for Team Korea's Park in Bi, who was two shots ahead of the field on 11 under par after Friday's third round. She's going to have to give it everything in the last round, though, to get the gold, as the gusty conditions are making it extra challenging for all the players. On top of that, Seoul-born New Zealander Lydia Ko, the world number one, is right behind her in second place on 9 under. Ko, who, was, who has been a longtime rival of Pax, blew the crowd away when she hit a hole-in-one during the third round on Friday. Moving on to rhythmic gymnastics, scoring 71.956 points during Friday's qualification event, Korea's Son yeon is on her way to hopefully snagging a medal. During her hoop performance, though, her hand slipped and she missed her apparatus, which ended up costing her. And in her ribbon, the tip of the ribbon fell around her ankle as she was landing at the end, for which she also lost some points. However, the 22-year-old finished the event by putting on a flawless show with clubs, placing fifth among 10 other qualifiers. Though South Korea has never won a medal in this sport before, the country has high hopes the world number five can make the podium in Rio. The final individual all-around event is scheduled to start at 3.30 p.m. on Saturday local time. And the men's 4 by 100 meter relay was no doubt one of the most exciting events of this year's Olympics as Usain Bolt made history. But on top of being the matchless runner, the Lightning Bolt is a star who knows how to entertain the crowd and is adored by sports fans around the world. He's such a showman. It's, it's great fun watching him. There's some good videos of him training and he says that the competition is the show. And I think everybody, everybody's watching him, right? Everyone has their eyes on Bolt and yeah, fantastic, brilliant performance. The Jamaica is so far from, far from here, but uh, we always support, I think everybody in every country supports him. Bolt picked up his ninth Olympic gold on Friday, and he's the only athlete to claim triple gold in the 100, 200, and 4 by 100 meter sprint events in three consecutive Olympics. And just in time for his milestone birthday, too, the Jamaican athlete will turn 30 on Sunday when this year's international sporting event ends with the closing ceremony. Bolt, who put Jamaica on the map by setting record after record, now ends his stay in Rio, leaving an undisputed legacy in Olympic history. And with that, let's now take a look at the upcoming schedule event on Saturday. Now, in the rest of the day's news, North Korea has issued its first official response to the defection of one of its UK-based diplomats to South Korea. North Korea's state-run Korean Central News Agency said Saturday that Taeyong Ho is a criminal who ran away because he was scared of being punished for his criminal acts. 
It also said the South Korean government was using Tae as part of a scheme to slander North Korea. The 55-year-old, who was Pyongyang's deputy ambassador to the UK for about 10 years before fleeing to South Korea, is the highest-ranking North Korean diplomat who is known to have defected. The Japanese government is continuing to distort well-documented facts about its wartime atrocities. Tokyo's foreign ministry has edited its website in an attempt to whitewash some of the horrors committed by the Japanese military in the early to mid-20th century. Park ji Won has the details. It has emerged that Japan's foreign ministry recently updated its website to include remarks by an official who denied the Japanese military forced women from Korea and other countries into sexual slavery before and during World War II. In an English language section titled Human Rights Humanitarian Assistance Refugees, a summary of remarks made by Shinsuke Sugiyama, the current deputy minister for foreign affairs has been posted. In his remarks to the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women in Geneva in February, Sugiyama said, quote, The forceful taking away of women could not be proven in any historical documents. In his remarks, Sugiyama even claimed the term sex slaves contradicts the facts implying the victims were prostitutes. The update comes despite Japan's foreign ministry acknowledging that so-called conversations were established in response to a request by the Japanese authorities at the time and that the Japanese military ran them. Watchers in Korea say the posting of Sugiyama's insensitive and hypocritical comments not only deeply hurt the 46 registered survivors who remain alive in Korea, but also makes Japan's neighbors question the sincerity of Tokyo's previous apologies. Korea and Japan reached a landmark agreement last December in which Japan apologized and pledged several million dollars to a Seoul-based foundation for the Korean victims. Historians estimate some 200,000 women, mostly from Korea and other countries including China, the Philippines and Taiwan, were forced into sex slavery by the Japanese during World War II. Park ji Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye is reportedly considering making her first official visit to Japan in November for a possible trilateral summit with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Chinese President Xi Jinping. The Tokyo-based daily Sankey Shimbun says that if President Park decides to make the trip, she could also hold one-on-one -on -one talks with Abe. However, the report says summit plans are far from concrete at this time, as there's a sizable amount of diplomatic disharmony to overcome, including the ongoing dispute between China and Japan over the, the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands in the East China Sea. The foreign ministers of the three countries will meet in the coming weeks in a bid to lay the groundwork for a summit. South Korea has confirmed its 10th case of Zika infection. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the patient is a 35-year-old man who came back from a trip to Thailand on August 8th. Officials say he was confirmed after showing typical Zika symptoms like muscular pain, fever and rash. He is said to be in stable condition and receiving treatment at a hospital in Seoul. This latest case comes around three weeks after Korea's ninth case was confirmed. Now, summer brings with it not only sweltering heat, but also some very unwelcome guests, namely mosquitoes. As you probably know, some people are bitten more frequently than others, and experts say a person's age and also alcohol consumption are two of the variations there. Park se -young has the details. Mosquitoes locate their target through smelling. They're attracted to the smell of sweat and carbon dioxide that humans give off. In fact, they can smell sweat at a distance of 20 meters. For mosquitoes, the chemicals released by humans like lactic acid and amino acid have a sweet scent. And according to experts, alcohol consumption contributes to mosquito attraction because substances from the liver for breaking alcohol down are added to the sweat. Metabolites from the liver are emitted through sweat, respiration and urine, which is why people who drink alcohol are more prone to mosquito bites than those who do not. 
The metabolism of babies and children is more active than that of adults, which also creates a unique body odor that attracts mosquitoes. Since mosquitoes are generally attracted to the smell of sweat, experts say showering after sweating is a good way to get fewer mosquito bites. Park Se-young, Arirang News. The, the flood in the U.S. state of Louisiana has been labeled the worst natural disaster to strike the United States since Hurricane Sandy in 2012. The Red Cross says it anticipates the cleanup costs will amount to at least 30 million U.S. dollars, a figure that could grow as the scope and magnitude of the devastation becomes clearer. Officials say around 40,000 homes were impacted by the floods and more than 86,000 people have so far registered for federal aid, with that number expected to grow. Now, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump visited Louisiana on Friday local time, and he criticized President Obama for not doing the same. Obama is currently on vacation with his family in Martha's Vineyard. The White House says he will travel there on Tuesday. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website, adidang.com forward slash news. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.